Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. The Resident Evil universe began in 1996 with the release of Resident Evil, directed by Shinji Mikami and released by Capcom, makers of hit game franchises such as Street Fighter and Mega Man. Since the mid-90s, the Resident Evil franchise has spread, with over 20 games, 3 CGI films, numerous comics and novels, and 6 live-action films, and has become a billion-dollar franchise. Currently, Resident Evil fans new and old from all around the globe are greatly anticipating the release of a remake for RE2, one of the most beloved games in the franchise. Counting down to its release, we will cover my favorite aspect of this series, which is the story itself and its characters. So buckle up as we dive into the history of Resident Evil. My goal in these videos is simply to educate new fans and try to condense the events from the lore into an easily digestible series that spans from the 1960s up to the events one day before that fateful night in September of 1998 when Resident Evil 2 takes place. If you're a long-term RE fan and feel I've gotten any information wrong, please help educate me in the comments down below so that the new fans get the most accurate information as possible. My source for most of this information are the games themselves, a few of the comic books, and the Resident Evil fandom wiki page, which is linked in the description box down below. Without further ado, I welcome you to the world of survival horror. Resident Evil. The Resident Evil franchise follows a fairly large cast over the course of its 20 plus games, but at the center of it all is the pharmaceutical enterprise known as the Umbrella Corporation, and its three founders, Dr. James Marcus, Lord Edward Ashford, and the Earl, Oswell E. Spencer. To understand the aspirations of Umbrella's leader, Oswell E. Spencer, we must first discuss the man who inspired the Earl on his quest for godhood. Henry Travis spent 35 years of his life traveling around Africa, studying its plants, animals, people, and cultures in the late 1800s. He ran a family company with his older brother called Travis Enterprises and documented everything he discovered on his voyage. These documents were collected into a 72-volume encyclopedia series detailing everything that Henry had witnessed and explored. Unfortunately for Henry, these books were not bestsellers, due to his older brother spreading lies that everything documented was fabricated in some way. This led Henry to depression, then to suicide. His older brother didn't want the world believing what Henry wrote, so that he, now sole owner of the company, could find these small miracles in Africa that Henry wrote about and claim them for himself. And while the world may not have believed these stories, one young man in the late 1930s believed every word. Oswald E. Spencer was particularly interested in what Henry wrote regarding a rare flower called the Stairway to the Sun. In his encyclopedia series, Henry described this rare flower as something that could grow underground with no need of sunlight to blossom, and could potentially improve a human in truly amazing ways, possibly even to superhuman levels. In the 1950s, during one of their many vacations together at Spencer's Castle Estates in Europe, Spencer and his two college friends, Lord Edward Ashford and Dr. James Marcus, began discussing their own trip to Africa in search of this rare flower. Ashford and Marcus were not so easily convinced that this trip was worth taking. Spencer's plans continued to grow, believing with all his heart that finding this rare flower was his destiny. After visiting a small Midwestern town in the United States called Raccoon City, Spencer took a liking to the town. It was quaint, but he saw all sorts of possibilities. In 1962, Spencer reached out to George Trevor, a rising architect and designer, commissioning him to build a large mansion for Spencer in the Arkley Mountains on the outskirts of Raccoon City. Trevor took the job without hesitation, committing to a five-year plan that would bring Spencer's dream house to life. While Trevor worked on the mansion, Spencer received his doctorate and finally convinced Ashford and Marcus, along with Dr. Marcus's protege, Brandon Bailey, to join him on an expedition in Africa near the home of the Nidipaya tribe, a place called Kajuju. Even though decades had passed from when Henry's older brother sold him out in order to explore Africa alone, the Travis Trading Company, aka Travis Enterprises, took the three portions of their business, pharmaceutical, shipping, and natural resources, and combined them into a new company called Tricell. They joined the Federation of Pharmaceutical Companies, the FPC, soon after Spencer went on his expedition. With the help of Dr. Marcus's star student, Brandon Bailey, Spencer, Ashford, and Marcus were successful in retrieving a few samples of the rare flower, studying it endlessly in hopes of unlocking its secrets. From the flower, they were able to extract a new virus, which they dubbed Progenitor. 
While the others grew frustrated by their lack of progress with the virus, Spencer decided to get more funding by creating a pharmaceutical company of his own, much like his inspiration, Tricell. The others resisted at first, but Marcus agreed that as long as he could continue researching this new virus, he would be on board. Ashford signed up as well, and in March of 1967, Umbrella was founded. In order to ensure the company's success, Spencer knew he would need real results from the progenitor virus. It was around this time that he got word from George Trevor back in Raccoon City. Spencer's secluded mansion, full of odd puzzles and traps designed by Trevor, was now complete. Spencer saw this as a means of celebration and invited George Trevor, his wife Jessica, and their daughter Lisa to the new mansion to join him for a weekend vacation. George accepted, bringing his family from Europe to the small Midwestern town of Raccoon City. It was here that Oswald E. Spencer's cruel nature manifested in full, blossoming in darkness just like the stairway to the sunflower he had searched for with most of his adult life. Spencer needed results, of any kind, from his progenitor virus. Now he had a family of test subjects waiting for him at his new home. To be continued. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. See you soon.